Hello there, dear listeners. My name is Marcos, and today I will be having a solo episode on the LTS podcast out of office. I want to remind everyone, wherever you are on YouTube, Spotify, or all your favorite podcast catchers, we have links in the description where you can follow us. Give your two cents if you want to、uh, agree or disagree on something. Give us a piece of your mind. On Twitter, now X, obviously, Instagram, and in the comments section of Spotify and on YouTube. And also, if you want to support the podcast, you know, let us grow more, get better at it, and you know, bring more content to you, dear listener. We have links in the description. We have a coffee. All those links in the description. Remember, anything is appreciated. From the bottom of my heart. And the LTS podcast team, I thank you. And now, straight to the podcast. Hey there! After the introduction, hopefully your week has been going well, and、um, I will be talking to you about some science, specifically space updates. This has been going on for the past week, and I have compiled a set of key takeaways that I want to share to you, and I want, if possible, on social media or on Spotify, wherever you're listening to this, to give me your two cents if you agree, if you're scared, if you're excited. I'm personally excited, by the way, to find out what happens with the latest space news brought to you by、uh, the U.S. NASA Department. Let's see where my money and your money, or U.S. American, if you're listening to this in the United States, if you want to find out where your money is heading. Obviously, we already know when it, or it's already been public knowledge and announced by President Biden that、uh, they're working with Boeing to produce a train to run on the moon. Details, obviously. You can find that on social media, online, wherever you listen to your news or want to follow your science daily updates. But this is something else, not moon related, by the way. It is outer space, and it's three big stories that I feel like you, dear listener, should have in your head. First off, let me prime you. Let me prompt you, if you will, with、um, what I think. We already know the budget that NASA has. It's in the millions. Obviously, it was a lot more during the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and throughout the 90s. But during the 2000s, it is、uh, public knowledge that the budget has been decreasing. Nonetheless, understanding that we know that there's been a quality that they haven't been willing to sacrifice if they know that they're not going to be able to guarantee a specific standard, scientifically standardized, if you will, with with the quality control. They don't go with the project, or they cancel it because of a quality control that they have a high standard for their missions, their projects. For example, right now there's something in the eye. I'm prompting you, dear listener. So I'll get to the story shortly, but I'm giving you a brief background of how NASA does their their projects, their executions, their even agreements to continue or even. Do a feas- feasibility study in the sense that they can guarantee a quality on the product of a project. Example: Boeing, private company that a、uh, uh, government contracted company, was having issues, technical difficulties with a、um, a craft that docks with the International Space Station. So right now it's been for forty days plus right now. As of the recording, that they're docked onto the space station, and we're supposed to bring down from the international the ISS some astronauts. But because they detected some difficulties technically, and they're trying to fix it, and that's a private company. Obviously, NASA works in collaboration with different companies. However, problems arose, and the project is being fixed. In real time, right now, news to come out later. Best believe that I'm going to do more research on that. But that's the level 
and that they're working with a small but still very measurable degree of error. And now, what am I prompting to you, dear listener, is the following. This is the title that I created. Extra, extra, read all about it. One step closer for mankind. Earth shields almost active. Asteroid laser mining and more. What do you think that's going to be? Let's find out. Obviously, I already know because I wrote the stuff out, dear listener. So let's go in. First uh, article. Obviously, I have compiled these links from different articles and I will provide the links in the description. Maybe even my script here. I'll include the, the links that I sourced them from. Just a disclaimer, dear listener. I compiled the data. I wrote it out. And I, of course, used AI to punch it up, if you will. So best believe that I'm using AI, specifically uh, the Google one, to um, to in- add more emojis. Uh, give me some proofreading because I am using Google Docs, dear listeners. I don't know if you've gone into the description, but here we go. Anyways, I'm getting distracted. Cosmic close-up. Asteroids get radar makeover. Asteroid paparazzi. NASA snagged detailed photos of two asteroids zooming past Earth. No threats, just science. These asteroids, uh, they're, they're a long string of letters and numbers. They flew by Earth. They didn't hit it, but they were so close that NASA was able to employ a radar system called the Goldstone radar that they have on the satellite aiming outwards. They already knew it for years that these asteroids were coming, so they were going to use it as an experiment to test their radar. So you already know that they were on a, on a race to get all this information, this hardware ready, launched, all those things. Millions, hundreds, thousands of uh, people of calculations, of dollars, of your and my tax-paying money, dear listeners. Cosmic snapshots reveal size, shape, and what their composition, uh, material even, of these asteroids. And found out what can be gleamed. And that's just awesome for me that these scientists were so enticed to find out what their what their world holds outside of planet earth scientists are piecing together their stories from just the use of radar asteroid with a plus one one of the asteroids even brought along its own moon asteroids do come with buddies even if they're going to impact or not They come with friends. Not your average space rock. The other asteroid is a funky, elongated shape. Definitely not to round. So they were able to glean a lot of details. Materials, design, shape, moons apparently. Aside from our moon. And they tested their system. It worked, dear listener. So here we go. After finding out what NASA is doing with their Goldstone radar system, uh, their system was successfully tested and detailed results were gleamed from this test, if you will. So now let's go on to the next story. Space Gold Rush. Lasers to unlock asteroid riches. Freaking space lasers, asteroid mining goes high tech. Forget pickaxes, like in Minecraft. Lasers are the new tool for extracting space treasures. I can imagine movies about that. Let me promote this to NASA. Laser pickaxes. Yeah. In Minecraft. Let's start with Minecraft. Yeah. Microsoft, you best believe I'm going to promote that for Minecraft. Solar powered space mining. Astroforge, a U.S. company, Astroforge's ingenious method to use the sun to melt and vaporize asteroid goodies. 
It's solar powered and used with lasers. Yes, sir. America, right? A screaming Eagle. From vapor to valuables. The collected vapor is processed to extract precious resources. Missions launching soon. Astroforge is ready to put this technology to the test in space this year 2024. Best believe that companies are trying to find a solution since NASA produced a radar system that can um, say radar, um, radar has detected a, uh, an asteroid on this direction. Whoever wants to go mining, may God be with you. And Astroforge is uh, uh, doing its best to publicize its marketability, pulling people for mining. I don't know. Like, let's find out, you know? Let's just keep our ears onto the internet to find out what they're saying. And now to the next story. Planetary Defense Victory NASA's DART Test Asteroid de Deflection Success That's a mouthful, dear listeners. You do not know how many times I try to read that bullseye. In space. NASA's DART spacecraft successfully slammed into an asteroid. It's already been completed and they have hit a cosmic nudge, if you will. The impact changed the asteroid's orbit, proving we can defend Earth. We don't have to destroy it, dear listeners, like that uh, Bruce Willis movie that they um, trained oil drillers as astronauts to um, destroy an, a an asteroid. It's, I think it's called Deep Impact. It wasn't a bad movie, but again, you don't need to go that hard. You can just deflect it and um, make it go wobbly on its orbit and just completely miss Earth. A giant leap for planetary defense. This mission is a major breakthrough in protecting our planet from asteroid threats. Yes. Remember that one that took out the dinosaurs that caused the Ice Age, that ended the Ice Age, there were three technically. Um, and a couple that hit up on the North Pole, one that hit in, in, the, um, in the Middle East, a couple that hit in uh, the South Pole. Yeah, all that can be prevented now with this DART program, if you will. It's probably an acronym. You, you can find out. Target practice for the future. This test helps us prepare for potential asteroid encounters. And definitely from... Uh, Aliens, maybe? Your listeners? Nah, nah. If aliens were coming, they'd probably just, you know, matrix that, that dart and just dodge it. But yeah, just general asteroids. No more, maybe? Um, apocalypse level events? Species wiping events, dear listeners? Because you already know that on Earth, the one on the Yuc Yucatan Peninsula, there was a huge one that killed the dinosaurs. Um, there's a, another one in the North Pole that I think killed everything in Canada, in the Americas, and uh, part of Mexico and part of Europe, dear listeners. There's a Tunguska event that happened uh, over that huge place that there were people that were witnesses to it. There was the South Pole. There was um, a lot. All this can be prevented now with the DART program brought to you by NASA and Americans with your taxpayer money. Yay! Those are the latest updates that I have compiled this week. Well, if you want to give me your two cents, your opinion, I'm here at the, on Spotify, on X, probably known as Twitter, and on Instagram. I've wrote some polls here and there, made some comments like uh, chicken parm, is it a meal or not? Um, I, I personally like anime. Um, I'm a uh, Shanks stand. Prove me wrong. All right. I left a little poll there on the X where you can give me your two cents or agree with or disagree with the comments that I left. I left some options. So your input would be highly, highly appreciated. I'm over here solo charging in space edition. And uh, I'm a terrible reader, dear listeners. Even though I practiced this script, I wrote it out. 
it was um hard to read because i i fly i fly i fly more uh by the seat of my pants right now i stopped reading the script and i feel like i can communicate better with you i obviously can bounce ideas with my co-host alan and mr j over here but they weren't here they couldn't uh come on i hope wherever they are i wish them the best from the bottom of my heart and hopefully i'll have them on the next episode but yeah so dear listeners this is marcos thank you for lending me your ears and for giving me your time again all the links in the description and if you want to give me a little bit for a cup of coffee here and there i highly appreciate it and i will do better next time i feel like i'm improving let's see if you can help me to do better i highly appreciate it thank you till next time peace